knew what the loss of Aaron Rodgers meant. Losing Aaron meant the team would really have to fight as a whole to push for the playoffs in what was shaping up to be a very competitive AFC this season. We knew the potential for our defense. It was obvious in the first few games of the season. Even with just league average offensive production, we had the potential to win a lot of games. What we didn't know was just how bad our offense could really be. Since the loss of Rodgers, we have gone through three quarterbacks, including our former second overall pick. When Zach got benched, the offense was horrific. Two games since then, the offense has gotten even worse. This system is tailor-made for Aaron Rodgers, and without him, it simply is not working. It's not working to the point that this team has the opportunity to finish as one of the worst offenses in the history of the NFL. Let that sink in for a minute. We started the season full of ecstasy, ready to finally see good quarterback play. Not just good quarterback play, future Hall of Fame quarterback play. Now, we're staring down the barrel of another miserable season with one of the worst offenses of all time, and the Jets are back in national headlines with another embarrassing locker room moment. Monday afternoon, news broke that the New York Jets were considering making a move to bring Zach Wilson back as the starter. It's obvious that without Rodgers, this offense isn't going to work, but it has looked even worse since Zach's benching. It would probably make sense for the coaching staff to want to bring Zach back, even though he clearly has no future at this franchise outside of this season. But according to Zach Rosenblatt and Diana Russini of The Athletic, Zach is supposedly reluctant to return as the QB for the Jets. The dust from this bombshell has yet to settle as of midweek. Tim Boyle was released on Tuesday afternoon after two of the worst QB performances I've seen in a long time. Shocking considering we've been watching Zach for three years now. With the release, the Jets brought in QB Brett Rippon off the Seattle practice squad. Based on everything we know and the continued reporting from Diana Russini, it seems like the report about Zach being reluctant to play is actually true. At this point, I think the best course of action would be to release Zach. How are you going to continue rostering a guy who doesn't want to play, doesn't have a future at the franchise, and doesn't have any trade value to other teams? If I had to guess, the only reason Zach is still in New York is because Aaron Rodgers wants him there through the end of this season. I cannot fathom another reason for Joe Douglas to keep him around. Brett Rippon has shown actual NFL evidence that he is better than Tim Boyle. I don't know how much of an upside he has over Trevor Simeon, though. Rippon does have experience in Nate Hackett's offense since they were together in Denver for the 2022 season. He actually uh, started a couple games for Hackett when Russell Wilson was injured last year, including the game against the Jets when we lost Brees and AVT. Rippon will really only have four days to try and learn the playbook and get any reps in practice. Because of this, I think it would be crazy to try and start him on Sunday. I would not be shocked if he played, though. The Texans game is an awesome coaching matchup. Both head coaches are extensions of the Shanahan coaching tree and work together in San Francisco. Both have had high praise for one another heading into the matchup, and both guys seem to be the type of coach that players want to play for. The Texans are a team on the rise currently. C.J. Stroud is looking like the consensus offensive rookie of the year and has even been thrown around in the MVP conversation. The Jets' defense will be a huge test for him, especially with one of his favorite targets, Tank Dell, going on season-ending IR last week. The Texans traded Deshaun Watson to the Browns for a Kings ransom of picks, and they have used those picks to completely rebuild their team. They have had three picks in the top three the past two years, and have used them to pick Will Anderson, Derek Stingley, and CJ Stroud. Will Anderson and Stingley are both having very good seasons. Stingley has taken a big leap in his second year with four picks and eight pass deflections, and Anderson excels at hitting the quarterback, although he only has five sacks thus far. In addition to Anderson and Stingley, Sheldon Rankins will also get his MetLife homecoming on Sunday. Losing Rankins was a big loss for us this season, but we did a good job of replacing him with Al Woods and Jefferson. But with Woods going on IR, we have really missed Rankins in our run defending. I think this is going to be a really hard game for the Jets to win. 
The Texans are currently have seven wins and are playing really good football right now. In order for the Jets to win this football game, someone is going to have to step up at quarterback. We are continuing to see frustration building on the defensive side of the ball. We need to score points in this game or we could quite literally get blown out by this Texans team. They have four games where they have scored 30 plus points. We haven't even scored 30 points in our last three games combined. Garrett Wilson was open constantly last week and nobody was feeding him the ball. If we can get an offensive spark and score a couple of touchdowns, that might be just what the defense needs to put a dominant performance up against a high-powered Texans offense. Ch -ch -ch